Welcome everybody to today's event. I'm glad so many of you could make it on your Sunday afternoon. Um, really appreciate it. Today we're going to be talking about downsizing. may not be a subject you've thought much about, but the, the goal is to convey some really important information to our community for people who are recognizing that the big house is getting too big, the maintenance is too much work, it's expensive, and it's just, there's no reason to have that big house anymore. And so the, the challenge is, is that a lot of people who are in that situation have a feeling of overwhelm. They're just looking at all the stuff that they've collected for 40 years. Uh, they're figuring, where do I go? What's a place that I'm gonna like, that I can move into? Um, how is this gonna affect me financially? I don't wanna be ripped off. I wanna make this transition. And sometimes, because of that overwhelm, um, it's just a paralysis. Nothing happens. Sometimes years go by, and somebody who knows that they really can't handle that big house anymore, they don't do anything because they just don't know what to do. And so we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna to have a number of different experts and different areas from your local community. Uh, and again, we're here not to advertise for ourselves, but to convey important steps that anybody considering downsizing uh, should think about and remember. Um, so the video, this is being video recorded, so if, you're, if you hear something and you think, well, I'm gonna, this is a lot of information, I'm gonna forget it, or you're taking notes, keep in mind that you can later go on and see the video and you're gonna be able to hear everything again. So I wanna start by uh, introducing Golden Providers. I'm the president of Golden Providers and uh, we're happy to uh, have arranged this meeting through Golden Providers. What that is is a local network that caters to seniors. Uh, Golden Providers provides education for our members and education for the community, and we're also a roster and a referral network of professionals that have learned to take good care of seniors in our community. They're, they've been vetted, and they're people that we can feel comfortable referring to other people. So again, if you're interested in hearing more about Golden Providers, you can contact any one of us afterwards, or you can check out the website on what that is. I want to give a special thank you to Hibiscus Court because they have allowed us to be in their venue and they're, a, they're the host for the Golden Providers meetings, Golden Providers board meetings, and this event. So I want to really say thank you to Hibiscus Court. We appreciate their hospitality. And I also want to thank Carrie Fink because he's put a lot of time and effort into preparing the the marketing for this event, posting it online, and helping to promote it. So thank you very much, Kerry, for your... Okay, so we have a simple agenda for today. Like I said, we have a number of experts in different subjects that are gonna be speaking, but really, the issue at hand for someone who's thinking of downsizing is really split into two pieces. It's going to be, where am I gonna go? You see, if you don't know where you're gonna go, it's a challenge, right? What kind of place is it gonna be? What is it gonna look like? How difficult is it to get from this big house into a smaller or simpler place to live? And we're gonna cover a lot of different options that are available for you to answer that question. And then the second question is, how are you gonna get there? Again, like we said, I've got 40 years worth of stuff. Some people more than others. Some people have been very sparse in what they collected over the years, and other people are actually hoarders, and they've got stuff piled up to here. So what do I do about it? And how is that gonna fit, or how am I gonna arrange to get into this smaller place down the line? And also, what's my first phone call? Who's the first person I'm gonna call to get this rolling? Or if I need to make four different phone calls, who do I call? What, am I gonna, what should I do? So our presentations are gonna be split into those two points. We would like just to ask that if you have a question, and hopefully you will have questions that pop up in your mind that, you know, I wonder, well, what does that cost? Or who do I call for that? Or what's your company again? Or whatever the 
question you might have, we are going to have plenty of time at the very end of our presentation to answer any questions. But we're not going to be taking questions during the, during the program for a number of different reasons, primarily because we're being recorded. We want to get everyone's uh, presentations finished, and then we'll be able to answer all of your questions and make sure you, you get the answer to that. OK, so here is a, a short description of the dilemma for lots and lots of people. So they've got a big house because maybe that's where they raised their family. And now all the kids are out, and they still have a big house with lots of stuff. And it's important to sell that big house before all the kids move back, because that's what they do nowadays, right? They move back with you. So. But you recognize that uh, um, things are expensive to uh, either, it might be getting more and more difficult to cut that lawn yourself, to do all the maintenance yourself. In fact, it could actually be dangerous to do a lot of this stuff that you used to be able to do, but realistically, you're just not able to do it anymore. And if you're having to pay someone to maintain a big house for, for really no good reason, it just gets expensive. Just writing checks to people to fix all of these things when you might be able to have a much smaller and simpler place to live that fits your needs in your current situation. So what am I going to do with all my stuff? People are concerned. Um, do I have to put it all on Craigslist? Do I have to run uh, garage sales? Do I have to do this work? Do I have to get a U-Haul and get my friends together and try to move it myself? Is that what I'm going to have to do? Because if you're thinking of taking care of all this stuff, again, it's overwhelming. And then who should I call? Most people, I would say, don't really know who to call to get this whole thing going and, and make it work simple for yourself. And of course, a legitimate question, moving all this stuff, selling my house, if I have to pay a realtor or a moving company or a, a professional organizer, how much is this going to cost? Or if I'm going to consider moving into an assisted living, how much is that going to cost? It's legitimate questions about what all of this is going to cost and, and how am I going to make sure that I'm being treated fairly in what's going on? Well, here's the good news for you. It's going to be easier than you think. So when you've been in, in the position of myself and a lot of your speakers for the day, you've seen this time and time and time again. And the reality is, if you know a few phone numbers of people that you can call to take care of these different things, it's really not that hard. It seems overwhelming, but you could actually take care of this process of downsizing very, very easily. And again, we're going to cover how that's going to, how that's going to happen. So the first section, as we said, is covering where am I going to go? And to get us started with that section, um, we're going to see three different groups of possible um, people that we might want to call. So you may not even be aware that there's people out there who are living options experts. Some of you don't even know what that means. But again, people who are acquainted with all sorts of different facilities around Brevard County and know the options for what kind of uh, uh, support you get in these different places that might suit your needs, the different costs, different levels of luxury, uh, different advantages to all the different ones who could actually consult with you and help you to find a great option that fits you rather than you having to drive around town trying to figure that out. You might already know of an independent living or an assisted living facility that you're interested in. So that might be one of the calls that you're going to make. And then finally, a real estate agent. So you might very well or probably very well are going to need a real estate agent to sell the big house and possibly to help you define what you're going to buy, what you're going to move into. So those are three different possible phone calls that you're going to make to get things rolling. So sometimes it takes a little talk with um, someone who's reached this point in their life to encourage them to, or nudge them to make that move. And uh, we're going to ask Heidi to talk to us a little bit about that conversation as we're going to call the talk. So and this is 
Heidi Kuschenbacher from Hibiscus Court. Let's give her our attention. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, the talk, you thought you had that in your teenage years, right? You get to do that again. Um, but I want to caution you before we really start. Um, you hear a lot about the child becoming the parent and the parent becoming the child. I want to caution you on that because your parent will always be your parent. They are never your child. They may act childish, they may act like someone that hasn't been your parent or your experience of your parent, but they are always your parent. So I caution you when people say that the parent becomes the child and the child becomes the parent. That's a myth. You are always the child. They are always the parent. Um, so keep that in mind, um, and I'll talk about that as we go. A couple of other things, emotions. Emotions are at play. We say this quite a lot around here. Um, when it's your parent, all bets are off. Even for those of us that have been in this business, because when it's your parent, you see your parent as a different person than everyone else does, because you've known them all your lives. You know what they used to be and what they are today. Sometimes that's different. So two real big emotions, <coughs> denial and guilt. So denial, people get very afraid of things and they say, oh no, it's not time for the talk because mom just forgot her meds this week. She couldn't just find her keys and we deny it because on our behalf, we don't want to see our parents be something other than we've known them all our life. On a parent's behalf, they are larger than in charge because they're your parent. It's what they do. It's what their job is. So they too are in denial. So I tell you, embrace denial because denial gives you time to adjust to a new reality. So denial's not a bad thing, it's just buying you some time. You gotta work through it, but it's on your side. Um, the other is guilt. Um, boy, you know, there's all sorts of religions that'll talk about guilt, you know, and this and that and the other thing. Um, you know, you have to know at the end of the day that you have to put your head on a pillow, that you've done the right thing, no matter how hard or how easy it is, at the end of the day, you have to have peace of mind. That's true for your parent and that's true for you. So guilt is a real tough thing. You have siblings that you work with, um, spouses, when it's about spouses, I think it's about 10 times more difficult than when it's a parent. Um, but those emotions are gonna come to bear through the entire conversation. So own them, know them, work through them because the talk is still the talk. So what do you first start noticing? Again, the keys, everybody in this room has misplaced their keys. Every dementia talk I give, the first thing people are thinking about when I start talking about things is, oh my God, I've got it, because I can't find my keys, right? Things you can do to, to, to combat that is putting them in the same place all the time, right? Get in habits, in, in schedules, in routines, that's always helpful in the short term. However, you start noticing maybe they drove to the wrong place, and they cover it up. Oh, I was going to CVS there at Walgreens, right? Oh, they were going to church, but they missed their service, because it was on Sunday and it's Monday. Little things start to, start to accumulate. When you start to see those, use those as an opportunity for communication. Doesn't have to be the time for the talk. The talk isn't one time. The talk is a series of conversations that you have when an opportunity presents itself. So, oh my gosh, I forgot to take my meds today. So ask, so how are you managing that? Is it working for you, that pill box that's worked for the last three, four years, that's not working anymore? Is there something out there that can help you a little bit longer? You start talking about things so that it's comfortable to talk about stuff. You have parents, you have two kind of, two groups of families. You have the ones that the family member's in charge, no matter what dad said, it always is gonna be this way, and you have a, the patriarch of a family that says it's always gonna be this way. That's hard to chat with, right? Then you have the other ones that are just gonna do whatever you say, and that's a wonderful thing, um, but they still don't wanna, nobody, none of us, none of us in this room, wanna be told what we can't do. When you're of a certain age, that's all you hear. You can't cook anymore, you might burn something. You can't drive anymore because you're not safe. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. From soup to nuts. 
So what we want to try to do is focus on what you can do. Build on that as long as you can, but in the process, have a conversation so that you can be in that conversation with the parent. Because when you get those patriarchal, it's only going to be my way or the highway, then you put them in charge. Use who you've got, right? So put them in charge. Say, okay, this is what you want to do. Let's lay out our options. Because we live on the Space Coast. There's a few engineers around here. They are pretty large and in charge, and they have a list. So let's give them a list. Let's work on their list for them, with them, alongside them, and then you'll find that decisions aren't quite as hard as you thought they were because the person is in charge. So I really want to emphasize communication because at the end of the day, it's about someone's peace of mind, your peace of mind, their peace of mind, and being able to know your options. Planning ahead, going to see independent living, going to see assisted living, going to see a smaller house, talking to a realtor, talking to people, coming for lunch, Put all the options out there that you can because the conversation isn't one talk. It's a series of conversations. So thank you for letting me be here today, and I'd love to answer questions later for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we're now going to give our attention to Rob Graham from Care Patrol. He's going to talk about maximizing our options, and he's a living options expert. I don't think I've ever been introduced that way before. Um, I'm gonna have a bottle of water if that's okay with everybody. Um, again, my name is Rob Graham. I'm the owner of Care Patrol of Melbourne. Um, really what my company does is we help families locate independent living, assisted living, memory care, private duty and home care, even skilled nursing care uh, for their loved ones. <clears throat> and there are companies like ours uh, in the county Care Patrol, for example, is 140 some odd locations throughout 41 states. The most important thing that we have noticed over the years is that there's a lot of misinformation out there as it relates to what's assisted living, am I appropriate for assisted living, what's independent living, can I get care if I'm in independent living, lots and lots of questions that folks have and they're frankly, sometimes they get bad information. So I view my role is to work with families to clear the land, if you will, and make sure that we're all <clears throat> defining what the different pieces and parts of the healthcare industry are so that you can make the best, the most informed decision for either yourself, your husband, your wife, whomever the loved one is. So when we talk about locating the right location here in Brevard County, you may or may not have known that depending upon the day of the week that you ask, there's about 170-ish locations throughout the county. There's also about, of those locations, about 85% of the total are made up by residential assisted living facilities. And those facilities are typically licensed for five or six people. The remaining 15% or so of the assisted living and independent living within the county are what we call communities, such as Hibiscus Court. And one of the things that we get families focused on early on is quality of care. Because in our world, it begins and ends with the quality of care. You can go to the newest, shiniest penny assisted living location in any city in the US. And I can guarantee you that there are some of them that their care history is horrible. It's just horrible. They look great, but the care is not is not what it needs to be. So one of the things that we focus on, and we do this all the time for the benefit of the families as they try to make these tough decisions, is we monitor the state of Florida's inspection results. And we're not ever going to, no one should ever really refer you for your loved one to a place that has a subpar deficiency or violation history. There's a regulatory body in most states that manages or governs, if you will, the whole notion of assisted living, skilled nursing, and so on. Um, so as we work with the families, we understand, are there any care needs involved? If it's someone is just downsizing, they don't want to deal with a the house, they don't want to deal with cutting the lawn, they just want to go to an independent living location, then that's 
different than someone who has stage four Alzheimer's, they may be diabetic, insulin dependent, whatever, whatever the care needs are. And there's a laundry list. We take the families through what we call a care discovery. And the care discovery gets down to those pieces and parts of the individual, what the needs are from a care point of view. Equally as important, and the families really can help us get centered on what is the best advice for that individual, is to know the personality of the loved one who is looking at going to make, make a change. Every assisted living location throughout the county, they have their own little different personality. I can't know your mom, I can't know you, I can't know your husband, your wife, whomever, anywhere near as well as you know them. So it's important that should you start this path, go, going down this path, that you work with a company that can help you isolate, take the 170 down to a few, and then make the right decision. So as much information as you can give us, we can be more helpful to you. And then the process gets narrowed even further where we will actually send some suggestions, some housing suggestions, again, be it independent living, assisted living, memory care, what have you, to you. And we, we then take a field trip. We, we go on tours. We will tour the various suggestions that we have sent to you. Hopefully we got it right the first time. You love it, your loved one loves it, and we can go forward from there. Um, if we didn't get it right, then we just, we just keep looking. Um, the other thing that we can do is help you with understanding where your financial resources that may exist for you out there. Because uh, insurance, unless you have a long-term insurance policy, doesn't cover any of this. So it's generally private pay, but there's, there's money from the, from the Veterans Administration. There may be me, uh, excuse me, Medicaid money that's accessible. So we help the families think the, through the financial side of the equation as well. All right, I've been talking for about three hours. So I will, uh, I'll be happy to entertain your, your questions, um, I guess, at the end. Thank you very much, Doug. Like I say, I dare, to, I dare to venture that there's people that don't know that there's a service like that that even exists. And so definitely um, interesting point that that could be one of the very first phone calls someone makes to get acquainted. So thank you very much for that information, Rob. We're now going to give our attention to Ashley. Hold on, I went too far. Ashley Caswell. She's gonna help us to understand what to look for in an assisted living. Ashley. Hello. Okay, so Rob went over kind of um, that there are, you know, what, what was it, 170 different, different ALs here in Brevard. Um, and no two are like, they're all different. They all have different personalities, different feels, um, and something's gonna be um, more appropriate for your loved one than another. Um, so the basics of what to look for, of course, that it's clean, um, that you're comfortable there, that the food is, is acceptable, that the food is good, um, that it's well kept and safe. Um, and, but the really, really the biggest thing that everyone needs to be aware of is that you're looking for the loved one's needs and not for the adult children's needs, not for someone else's idea of what they think you need. So um, a lot of times families really focus on what mom used to do. Mom used to like to go golfing. Mom used to love to go swimming. So they focus on that and then they really harp on, oh gosh, we need a place with a swimming pool. But you know what? That, that's not mom now. If mom's needs have changed, if her likes have changed, if what she can accomplish successfully on her own has changed, then you know, she doesn't need a swimming pool. She doesn't need a golf course. What she needs is consistent um, care and support. Um, you know, sometimes just having a chef and a, a chauffeur is really all someone needs. You know, they don't, you know, the, focusing on having a pool and, you know, um, jazzercise or all these fun things or a, a weightlifting room. Um, I hear that one a lot. So show me your weightlifting equipment. They're, that's 
that's not, that's not what anyone, maybe she liked that you know, 15 years ago, but that's not the goal for right now. So it's really important to focus on who you have in front of you now and what they, ha what they need, but also what they're going to need. So if you make a move, um, if you've been told that your loved one has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and you make a move to an independent living community that does not support memory care in the future, you're gonna be making another move. Um, so it's really important to plan for who you have in front of you, but also who you're going to have in front of you so that someone doesn't have to move again. You know, because moving becomes a challenge. Moving is stressful, and it's best to only do it once. If you do have to move within a community, it's great when you still know all the caregivers, it's all the same staff, it's the same, same management. Um, it's a lot easier on someone if they're able to move within the same community or family of communities. Um, so each different building, each different facility or community has a completely different personality. So it's really important that you find the right community that's going to be right for you. Um, there are some that it's all about the party, it's, you know, it's all fun with great care. That might not work for someone who's been a hermit their whole life who just likes to go to the library and sit in their apartment. Um, you know, it might be too much stimulation. Um, there are small group homes that is not gonna be enough for someone who likes to go out dancing in her stilettos every night. So, you know, it's really important that you, you know, take into account financial stuff, but also really personality and lifestyle. Because assisted living really is about lifestyle um, and about what you, can, what you can add to your life, not what's being taken away. Um, so it's also really important to meet the management of every community that you visit. If you're considering living there, you know, theoretically for the rest of your life, you really want to know that you can trust the management, that you know who's running it, maybe know who owns it, um, know who the leadership are, because they're the ones that are going to make decisions with you that impact your, your life. So it's important when you go on tours, that you, that you interact with as many people as you can and not necessarily just the salesperson. Um, and so another big thing is um, judging a book by its cover. So lots of communities, when you first walk in, it's scary because you've never been to an assisted living before. You don't know what to expect. You're thinking it's the nursing home from 30 years ago and there's a lot of anxiety coming into a community your first time. So make sure you don't judge a book by what you think is the cover. So, you know, some buildings um, might be a little older, and when you come in, you understand that, that they're like that because that's what they're geared towards the resident's taste, the resident's lifestyle. It's not meant to, you know, be um, a shiny brand new Caribbean resort because that's not what these, these people are going to feel comfortable in. So make sure when you are um, checking out communities, that you are looking at it through the eyes of the person who's going to live there based on their needs um, with you know, the future in mind. Um, and of course, also make sure that you understand what the facility is able to do care-wise. Um, every community has um, a, a certain license, but within that license, they are able to choose what care they will do. So just because someone has a big extensive license doesn't mean that they're going to meet your needs in the future. So when you talk to the management, make sure you really outline what the costs are going to be and what sort of care they're willing to provide to their residents. So, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Ashley. We appreciate that. Good insight into what to think about in terms of finding or selecting an assisted living. So the other or another part of the puzzle is going to be finding the right real estate agent. And um, as we said, it's possible that that real estate agent not only helps to liquidate the big house, but possibly also helps somebody find a smaller and a simpler residence. So that's basically two transactions. And it could be a double closing. If you, if you know what I mean by a double closing, that is, it's possible that the money from this big house is what is going to pay for this second house and possibly will be closing them both on the same day, which 
if I put it this way, if uh, a real estate transaction is like a string of dominoes, every transaction has, let's say, 100 dominoes that are going to have to all fall in line for a successful closing. Now, if you have two closings that are going to happen on the same day, you've got 200 dominoes, and everything has to happen on the same day so both of the deals close and the person's able to move. And then you have, of course, the logistics of the move if all the stuff is going to have to be moved out from the one house into the other house. And anything that goes wrong with either one of those transactions affects the other. So you understand it's kind of a complex uh, situation if that's what's happening, if, it is both, uh, if there's two transactions closing on one day. So what should you look for in a real estate professional? Um, well, one of the questions would be, how many years has the person been in the business? That's a question that I would ask about anyone. And I will use the analogy of if I'm going to have surgery. Now, you're probably thinking, well, a real estate transaction is not as serious as having surgery on my hand or on my heart or on my brain. And that's true. But it's still the, the largest financial transaction of their lives for almost everyone. So it is a very serious, huge transaction for people. So it's legitimate to say, I would almost want to use the same questions that I'm going to say if I'm going to select somebody who's going to perform surgery on me for uh, the real estate agent. So how many years in the business? Um, what kind of reviews are they getting? If I see that someone's got 50 really good Google reviews or Zillow reviews, from other uh, consumers or lots of good, uh, happy reviews on their website or someone who has very few. It doesn't mean that the person with very few is not a good person or is not a good real estate agent, but it helps to assure you that this person's got a lot of happy customers, so hopefully that'll, that'll be the case with me. Is it someone who's been in the local area for a long time, knows the local area? Uh, or is it a warm personal recommendation? So maybe I've never heard of the person but someone that you already know and trust is warmly recommending this person from lots of experience. Now that, that helps. So again, similar to if I'm going to choose the doctor for surgery, I don't choose the person who's a friend of my neighbor or the son of my neighbor just, just for that reason alone. Someone who goes to my church for that reason alone. Or just the first one that I stumbled across or the first website that popped up on Google not necessarily the only criteria. I would be a little more picky than that in cho choosing who I was going to use as my real estate agent. So what type of a new home, if the agent's going to both be selling the old home and buying a new home, what types of, of new home would be appropriate for downsizing? Well, single story town home, and don't even think about the, the two stories. You would be surprised how many people who are, I would say, over 50, and they're looking to buy a two-story, it's like, it's kind of short-term planning because at some point that two stories may not work any longer. So single-story townhome, again, the townhomes have a lot of maintenance that's included in the homeowners association on the exterior, possibly everything on the exterior. A condo, again, if it has a, an elevator, something where you're not walking upstairs in terms of a condo. There's 55 plus communities uh, that are a lot of times gated very good price worthy communities and a lot of maintenance included is an option and in our county we actually have some communities where you pay a quite a large association fee but literally everything on the house is maintained i don't know if you're familiar with that but there everything from uh fixing and replacing the roof painting the exterior to changing every single light bulb is included so those communities do exist and the other one would be finding a place with a mother-in-law suite. You might uh, realize that the solution in downsizing might be moving into a mother-in-law suite together with your, your, one of your children. And this is becoming more and more common that either the kids are moving back home, maybe they're not able to make it on their own, the kids are moving back home and need some financial help from mom and dad or from mom, and or that mom needs a little more help and it's good for her to move in together into a house with a mother-in-law suite. But in our local community, a full-fledged mother-in-law suite is very rare. If you actually look for them, because typically it requires a multifamily zoning, and we don't have a lot of multifamily zoning. There are certain ones that were built maybe without permits where there's a full kitchen and a full bath and a separate apartment, but it is something that 
You want an expert who knows where are those houses that are out there that have the full mother-in-law suite if that's the option that you're looking for. So again, an agent who has experience in double closings because there's a lot of moving parts. And then the question would be, I want to get top dollar for the big house. So I want to deal with an agent who has a lot of experience in, in getting the closings, has a lot of marketing, has a lot of lead generation platforms, has a big referral network. Uh, and personally, I would say somebody who um, closes at least 50 transactions a year or more. And the only reason I say that is if it's fewer transactions, you can do the math on it and you're looking at a part-time agent for most likely. And so you don't want a part-time person listing your home. You want someone who that's all they do and they sell a lot of homes to show that they have systems in place so they can do it and get your house sold for as much as possible. So again, look at some samples of their marketing, look at their flyers, look at their websites and, and ask them for, for real numbers. Because a lot of times people might have a lot of talk but they can't show you any real numbers to back up what they say they, they can do for you. So there's a few things to consider with your um, finding your listing agent or your real estate agent. Um, and feel free to interview several. I know it's tempting to just take the first person who comes down the, the pike, but feel free to interview more than one to make sure that you feel that there's differences between the people that you interview. All right, so that's a little bit about selecting your real estate agent for this. Um, now we're going to talk about all that stuff that people have. And our first guest talking about taking care of our stuff is Maria Waddell from Clutter Be Gone. And she is a professional organizer. Thanks, Tom. All right. I think some of us can relate to this, right? OK, let me just, all right, so here we go. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about myself so you know who you're dealing with. Um, second oldest of seven kids, had an older brother who didn't do anything, I think, except walk on water. <laughs> um, so some of you might have been the oldest daughter in the family. It's a lot of responsibility falls on your shoulders, helping mom with dishes and folding laundry and whatever. And along the way, I realized I like being an organized person. And so I, it was just an inept thing for me, just jump in there and take care of things. Well, my whole life, I had different careers, and in 08, decided I'm going to make a career change and became a professional organizer. And I love what I do. I have a passion for it because I am changing people's lives. What I want to do is, first of all, tell you I'm licensed, insured, and background checked. Everything I do is confidential. The, the pictures that you see, my clients have given me a written um, release to show these pictures. You'll never know who it is, though. All right, so it is confidential. All right. So we're talking about downsizing. Best time to start downsizing is right after retirement. Why? Because our lives have changed. We don't need all those suits. We don't need all those heels and so on. So we can start getting those out of our closet. Are you interested in moving closer to your family? Tom talked about the large house. Maybe medical concerns might be a reason that you might want to move. You can't do the steps anymore. We want to eliminate as much stress as possible. This is a stressful room. A lot of people have many stressful rooms, and they don't know where to begin. So not beginning is a decision. Take it in small steps. First thing I suggest is have a to-do list. Get yourself a journal or a notebook, and it's dedicated to just your to-do list. Start writing things down, like you need to paint the back bedroom, you need to get that leasy faucet fixed or whatever, because if you're going to have somebody like Tom, a real estate agent, come in, those are things he's going to say need to get done anyway, so might as well start working on those things. Um, eventually you're going to have to list like cancel the newspaper, uh, when you have to have your utilities turned off, things like that. So just write it down because the more you dump out of your mind onto paper, it's going to free your mind up for other thoughts that can help you with your organization. Stuff can suffocate and immobilize us. I don't have to ask anybody here which living room you'd rather come home to. <laughs> Ladders. Tom was talking about getting somebody to do yard work and whatever. This, the ladder in here is a detriment to somebody's safety, just getting the ladder, let alone getting on the ladder. As we get older, our bones become more fragile, 
we're not as careful as we used to be, maybe we get distracted easier. So eliminate any uses for a ladder. Get those things out of your attic, get somebody to do it for you because first of all, if you have it up in your attic, you probably have too much stuff. <laughs> My opinion, kitchen clutter. I know that I used to cook for up to 24 people every Thanksgiving and Christmas, full course, sit down dinner, I don't do that anymore. Now my girls take that on. So when I moved here seven years ago, I gave away all my baking dish pans and dishes and, and all my entertaining pieces because I decided I'm not going to do that. I don't have the big house anymore. I've downsized myself. So just remember, if you don't have room for it in your kitchen now, you're not going to have room for it in your kitchen when you downsize. Tablecloths. How many of us have linen tablecloths? that are stained or frayed. We're not gonna use them, but we still have them. But if you knew of a good place that you could donate them to, it might be easier to let go of them. Storage units, backyards, sheds. Let me tell you again, if you don't have room for it in your house now, you're not gonna have room for it in your smaller home. So this is probably the best places to start with your downsizing because those things have been removed from your house to begin with and you're not as attached to them. I'll tell you a story. I had a woman who had four storage units. Two were 20 by 20s and then two smaller ones. She re re uh, renovated <laughs> sorry, her home and so she put a lot of stuff in there. The problem is after it was renovated, she went out and bought all new things. After two years, she found my card. She called me up and she says, Maria, I need your help. I realized I spent over $7,000 on my storage units in the last two years. Okay, and she didn't want any of that stuff anyway. Exercise, equipment, books, movies. Let me tell you, first of all, I don't know too many people who use exercise equipment at home. It's usually holding your clothes piled up on it, right? Get rid of it, donate it, go join a gym. If you have health first, Guess what, you have free, and you're 65, you have free gym membership. You have awesome aerobic classes, places where you can socialize with other people, and it's more of a motivational factor than doing it by yourself in your bedroom. Books, CDs, movies, you can rent them from the library for free. If you said, well, I, these are all books I bought, and I have plans to read them, Make a list in that journal of all those books, donate the books, and when you're ready to read that book, go check it out at the library. They'll hold it for you. <laughs> Plus, you can get a lot of books on audio, um, in the audio version too, so while you're driving, you can listen to them there. But a lot of people are very attached to their books, and I understand that. Paperwork, how many people here have a problem with paperwork? It's a problem for everybody. As you can see here, bags and bags of problems. This woman had her important papers, what she thought were important papers, in a little safe, which really wasn't fireproof or waterproof, but and her, what she considered important were all the warranties on all her appliances. We found her social security card, her passport, her, um, all her important papers were in these bags. So you need to ha establish an efficient, system for your paperwork and and follow that because if there was an emergency and you had to evacuate you want to just be able to grab something and go all right children's artwork and memorabilia let me tell you we all have a soft spot in our heart for those pictures our grandchildren our children made for us I see a man sh shaking his head. <laughs> oh, but there, you do have a soft spot for the tools in your garage. I know that. <laughs> in any case, you need to take some time, be kind to yourself, be compassionate. You, you're going to find there are times you're going to become very sentimental, maybe shed a few tears, and it's okay. But give yourself, say, a half, an, half a day, and then you're going to move on. Tomorrow's going to be another room. In this picture here, this was a woman's closet underneath a staircase, which Florida has a lot of these kind of closets. All her pictures were in the very back of this closet. 
She said every time they had to evacuate for a hurricane, she hauled out container after container after container of pictures. A lot of stuff wasn't even in containers. Well, I discovered this because she asked me to get something out of this closet. I said, I can't put it all back without organizing it. And as you can see, now it's so much neater and she can get to what she needs. But you can digitize all those pictures. If you really need to keep that one special handwritten picture, there's a way to do that so it doesn't become clutter and so it's safe and it's protected. But you can digitize everything. Get your adult children in to say, you know, what do you want to take with you? What do you want to keep? Is this important? You'd be surprised how many times they say it's not important to me. Trophies. We all have pictures taken when we had our trophy, when we received the trophy, right? So why do you need to keep the actual trophy? You could take that to the Salvation Army or Goodwill and they'll recycle it. They'll pop the, the plaque off, or you can do that yourself, and somebody will buy it, put a new one on. All right, before picture here. You're gonna, have, you're gonna hear from a moving company next. If this was your house and you had to move, they're gonna pack all that up and they're gonna deliver it to your new house. You don't want that. <laughs> Why do, why do you want to pay somebody to do that? You want to go through that, get rid of the, the clutter, and only pack what you really want to take. Here's a picture of an assisted living, oops, assisted living client. Look at the clutter, because you know what? She took too much stuff with her. Now she has a lot of trip and fall hazards. It's not safe, and she's not happy because she can't enjoy the things that she took with her. Anybody here is invited to go over to Salvation Army on Route 192. Go to the back where you don't, matter of fact, bring them some stuff to donate while you go. There's a piece of equipment back there that crushes compactly any article of clothing, frayed tablecloths, stained, ripped. As long as it's clean, bring it to them or to Goodwill. And they're a conduit for another company that buys this from them to make beautiful carpeting. I saw a sample. So if you're not sure what to do with that extra sock or that stained bedspread or ripped towels or whatever, take it over to them. They look at every article before they put it in there. Okay, my time's up, but I just want to say um, medications, there's a way to dispose of them properly, but not down the drain. You, um, I can re refer to that later. You worked hard, hard all your life. It's time for you to enjoy yourself. Congratulations and have a happy retirement. Tom. Thank you very much. Interesting points. Very, very important. Um, next, we're going to hear from a professional moving company. And I could just say, uh, you may have, uh, when you're getting ready to downsize, you may have said to yourself, well, all my life, I've always rented a U-Haul. I've always loaded it up myself. I've always gotten my friends over on a Saturday, after, a Saturday morning, and we had pizza uh, when we made after the first load. There's some problems with that. Someone's going to break their back, and someone's going to have a heart attack, and someone's going to get hurt, and your friends don't really want to. And is that really what we want when you could simply pick up the phone and make a phone call and have a professional company who does it for a living move all the stuff from point A to point B? really, really um, makes sense. And so we're now going to give our attention, let's see, to Heather with a Mother's Touch Moving, and she's going to talk to us about how to use a moving company. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, in regard to um, downsizing for seniors using a moving company, obviously, we recommend that that's the, uh, the best idea. Um, we are a full service moving company, and just to give you some insight into that, we will come in to your home, pack it, just like it is now, say you all went home and decided right then you're gonna move. We can um, come in, pack everything, move it to your new location, and unpack it for you if you'd like. You really literally have to do nothing. However, obviously we'd recommend that if you have a lot of stuff, you had someone like Maria come in and Thin it out before you did that because we do bill by the hour. We will do it all, but it's uh, probably in your best interest to have um, someone like that come in and, and uh, work with you on that level. 
Um, in regard specifically to seniors, we move um, a lot of folks um, in, out, around um, retirement communities in Brevard. So we've been into, I would say, pretty much almost all of the, the larger communities. So we know, um, you know, what a one bedroom at this location looks like, what, uh, you know, a, a two, one bedroom den or, you know, and, and how much can fit into one of those places. Obviously, uh, a whole house is not going to fit in there. So um, since we've been throughout, um, inside and out the community, as we know what you can and can't take, you know, and we can give you some insight into uh, that sort of thing so you can have a plan as to what maybe you need to get rid of. <laughs> um, in regard to packing, um, I would probably recommend that uh, we were to come in and do, or a moving company to come in and do packing. Um, first of all, a lot of people don't actually know how to pack. Um, our teams are trained to know specifically how to pack specific items. And in regard to liability, if you have a moving company move all of your items, they're liable for it. So if you pack your you know, precious china and you maybe don't know exactly how to pack it and it gets broken, that stinks. You know? So if you have a professional come in and pack those super sentimental items for you properly, you will avoid any you know, damage or you know, heartbreak for having those items uh, broken. Um, a lot of seniors have limited liability on having people help them because a lot of kids have grown up and moved away to a different state and you know that sort of thing so in terms of having even anyone to help a lot of times that's limited so that's where a moving company would come in and then also in regard to you know health issues and that sort of thing you know we don't want anyone to get hurt doing that so we uh that's where we would come in we've got a uh, several crews of nice, strong, strapping guys who are able to pick up pretty much anything. Um, and let's see here. Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much what, uh, what we'd recommend. Um, you know, the, the fact that, like, uh, you know, Tom and Marie have touched on about moving from your home after living in there 30, 40, 50 years, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to take everything and that's uh, where it's important to have people in the, in the business and the know-how to know what you can and can't take or what you should and shouldn't take and, um, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, it's definitely good to have these kind of resources from, you know, everyone here who uh, knows what they're, what they're doing. And then in regard to what Tom said on the closings, I can't tell you how many people we have who close both their houses in the same day and have to be out of the house that they're in currently in order to uh, be able to close on it. So um, we handle those situations in a lot of different ways. Um, we have options on that, but we do that probably once a week for people um, who are closing both homes in the same day. So it's uh, definitely, we're like the surgical tech team maybe uh, on top of that, uh, you know, the surgeon there. But um, yeah, so that's us. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. All right, thank you. So, We've got the moving company moving the stuff that we want to keep. But what about the stuff that I know is just, I don't need it anymore. And I've heard that there's a thing called Craigslist. Maybe I'll just take a picture of it and I'll, or I'll do a garage sale for three weeks in a row and try to worry about the process of this on top of all the other things. Or could I just make a phone call and have a professional company who handles the liquidation of the stuff that I don't want to just throw it away. I want it to end up in somebody else's hands, but I don't want to have to bother with it myself. And that would be an estate sale company. And so now we're going to listen to an estate sale company. And James from uh, Brenda Kitco Estate Sales is going to tell us that it's simpler than we think. Hi there. So we understand how uh, stressful and how uh, emotional it is to be selling all of your stuff that you've taken a lifetime of saving and bringing it into your home. And so um, we want to just let you know that it can be so much more simpler. Um, hiring an estate sale is a great way to um, come in and absolutely liquidate all of your belongings. Maybe not all of your belongings, but the ones that you're going to keep uh, taking with you. And then you've got all this stuff that's left over. Um, so what we do is we will come in um, about a week in advance and we'll come in and start doing research, a lot of organization, 
um, a lot of cleaning and, and research and all these different items that you may have. And then we'll be posting them all over the internet, trying to get them all um, basically uh, uh, a lot of uh, views on your on all the stuff that you have been collecting throughout the years. A lot of it's worth a lot of money. It's a lot of things that you wouldn't consider that you have been holding on to for 30 years might be worth quite, quite a bit um, nowadays. Um, so we take about a week um, organizing, researching, posting things onto the internet. And then um, on Thursday, what we'll do is we have a large list of people that we contact that we know of that buy certain things letting them know where the estate sale is going to be the next day. And typically, we'll start on a Friday. A Friday is when we'll uh, start with this, the estate sale. A lot of people will show up. They know what they're looking for. Um, we can point them in the right direction. And basically, our job is to um, eliminate the stress of having to sell all the items that you've been saving for years and years um, to uh, make, as, make as much money for you as possible and sell as many of your things as you want sold. Um, so we get that done Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. It's, um, we have the, Friday is usually um, for the people that come in that we have on our list. Saturday, it's open to the public. Everybody comes in and they're just absolutely will buy just about anything that's inside your house. I recommend if you're going to do an estate sale, I wouldn't throw anything away because people will buy just about anything. Um, and so basically when it comes down to the end, <coughs> Um, you have the option, we'll do whatever that you want us to do. We'll communicate that beforehand. Um, we will have your entire house cleaned out for you. Uh, say it's a situation where you need to, you're going to close. We can have just about everything out and ready for the cleaning crew to be coming in um, on time before you're closing. Um, we'll take what's left. A lot of times we'll donate it to a charity of your choice. Um, we can do that for you as well. Um, if you want to, if you want to handle what's, what might be left over, that's fine. Or if you want us to completely empty and clean up, get that house completely cleaned out of everything that's there, ready for the closing, um, we can do that for you as well. Um, it's really, really an amazing feeling when I've seen people, when they come back to their house, that was just an absolute mess with so many different things and then they come back and it's completely cleared out. There's nothing left, there's nothing to do. And they walk in and they realize there's nothing to do. That stress is just gone. And so everything that they wanted to take with them, they've taken with them. And a lot of times we'll find a lot of personal items, old photographs and things like that. And we always save those things for the people, um, save those things for them. So we can give those to them as well. Um, so that's basically it. We can. Our job is to make that so much less stressful um, to, um, to sell as much of your stuff as we possibly can for the, and get you as much money as we can get you for everything that you have, All right, making your life a lot less stressful. And that's what I have. Look for your answers, for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, that was um, the... the the content, and as you can see, what we're looking at is simply a number of phone calls that I could make if I'm considering downsizing to figure out the answer to those, those two questions that we said in the beginning, is figuring out where I'm gonna go. And again, don't put the cart before the horse. You, you need to know where you're going before we start selling your house or getting rid of your stuff, right? You need to know where you're going, figure that out. And then the other part of it can be easy if you just involve the right people. Downsizing 101, the definitive guide to downsizing, presented by Golden Providers. Golden Providers are top industry professionals in real estate, assisted living, senior care, and so much more. Visit us online at goldenproviders.com.